continuing Good. on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we have the same clothing on as our last nails in the coffin, so we're just kind of continuing on here. Yeah, and now that he's handed me my uh, papers from the printer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So what are we uh, discussing oh, in this portion? Okay, so we want to thank um, Atlantis, because he has sent us some elders letters, and the source. The source. He has sent some things. The also. unnamed source this time, right? <laughs> Just the source. The source who is the source. <laughs> the source. Clear as mud. <laughs> okay. We all hope you enjoyed those outtakes. <laughs> It took us four attempts because he kept making me crack up laughing. It's like, this is supposed to be serious. Yeah, we were just having way too much fun. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, how he could do with a straight face talking about the Cylons. I mean, <laughs> wow. So anyway. Yeah, and this is supposed to be serious. Yeah, too. it yeah. is. This is very serious because um, in this packet that the source has sent us, there is a 2009 Kingdom Hall manual. Now, for you Jehovah's Witnesses and XJWs that don't know, there is a manual that goes out to every congregation. And this is kind of like the Elder's Guidebook, and it has all the information in it of how congregations are supposed to be run and how things are supposed to be handled. You know, kind of like the flock book for elders, only this is for the congregation and Kingdom Halls. And uh, it's interesting because in this one, I came to a section that is called the Kingdom Hall Assistance Arrangement. And we've discussed that before because there was an elder's letter not too long ago. We're here in the U.S. Um, it's supposed to be like $8 per publisher, uh, yeah. you know, each year or, you know, per year. Yeah, that was one of those resolutions passed where full yeah. disclosure for the money, how the money was going to be yeah. used for, was not fully disclosed. It was just for the Kingdom Hall assistance arrangement but now we're going to get into a little bit of full disclosure now yeah you know and we figured out that that came to millions of dollars being paid in between that and the traveling overseers fund so anyway back in august of 2014 there was a letter that was read read, read to the congregation that they were changing the kingdom hall assistance fund or arrangement to the GAA, which is the Global Assistance Arrangement. And I'll just go over this letter real quick again, because this is for the Global Assistance Arrangement for 2015 service year. And uh, we'd like to thank, take this opportunity to thank you for your continued financial genera generosity and support of the worldwide preaching work. Your regular and cheerful giving, no doubt, brings great joy to our God, Jehovah. Knowing of your desire... <laughs> yeah, you guys just have this desire to support the organization. We would like to inform you of a revised global arrangement that is sustained by your contributions. It expands and replaces what was formerly known as the Kingdom Hall Assistance Arrangement and will be called the Global Assistance Arrangement. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The GAA is designed to prevent and pay for losses resulting from, now they have this in quotation marks, unexpected events. This includes the child abuse cases that could affect the organization. Now we know why. It cares for accidents at kingdom halls, assembly halls, and branch facilities, or whenever there is damage that is a result of natural disaster, fire, moisture, or vandalism. The arrangement is based on the principle found at 2 Corinthians 8.14, where we find the Apostle Paul's encouragement that an equalizing take place with regard to financial support. Okay, now I'm not going to read all of this, um, but it says um, funds are annually set aside from contributions to the worldwide work to ensure that no loss to a congregation or any theocratic entity would cause an undue burden on any of our brothers. So they want this equalized throughout the world. Yeah, but now there's another letter that come out and said that congregations are responsible for their own repairs and own maintenance so, you know it was right. in the LDC meeting and they they changed that yeah so um, are you done or can I make some comments no I okay. almost, almost done but for this here they want three pounds for each publisher and 3.75 euros for the Republic of Ireland and this is you know a recommended but when you go to the second page, guess what? P.S. to the elders only. They tell the elders, 
you figure out three pounds times the number of publishers. So this is a set amount. It's not a recommended donation, no matter what the publishers think. So, okay. Well, basically, what this is boiling down to be, this global assistance arrangement, is really boiling down to be a organization, Watchtower and Babel Crap Society, being self-insured. Um, let me put this um, in a way that we might be able to understand it better. I was in the rental equipment business for 14 years. And every time we rented a piece of construction equipment, um, there is an optional 5% damage and theft waiver. And of course, the customer had the right to pay the 5% or not pay the 5%. But if he did not take the damage and theft waiver, theft or damage occurred to the equipment, they were responsible for all costs in repairing that piece of equipment or the replacement of the stolen equipment. But from the rental agency, from the company that I was involved with, that really became a in-house self-insurance policy. Now, for my little branch that I managed, we, uh, we grossed a little over $5 million per year, and you put 5% on top of that. Now, there was four branches at the time. Of course, the branch that I had actually was, as the branch went, we were actually making more money than the other branches, and that's because the area we was in had a tremendous amount of construction going on. But what would end up happening is at the end of the year, if you did not have any theft of equipment, if you did not have any major damage to the equipment, all of that money that was generated from the 5% of the rental fee was actually rolled over to the profit at the end of the year. And that's what Watchtower, in my opinion, is doing here. They're getting all of these Jehovah's Witnesses to pay the $3, $8 a month, or whatever it is, and it's going into a self-insurance policy so that if you don't have any damage to a Kingdom Hall, then that money just rolls over into Watchtower's profit. Now, we're going to get more into that. Yeah, because we do know, we're going to explain and show this later, that Watchtower has given specific instructions for the congregations do not outsource insurance. You get your insurance through Watchtower and Babel Crop Society. You just had to give it away yeah, first. Yeah, I did. I had to. Oh, blabbermouth. 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 <laughs> well, okay. that sounds like something Lego Mikey would have done, huh? Yeah, he does that too. He's a blabbermouth too. Okay, so now we're going to go to the Kingdom Hall Manual. And I have this available on a PDF if anybody wants this. This is from 2009. And um, here on page 17... There's the Kingdom Hall Assistance Arrangement, and of course we just explained what that is. Now this is interesting um, because, like I said, publishers don't always yeah. see this. Contributions designated for the KHAA can be used to pay for property damage to Kingdom Halls and liability claims against congregations and their authorized representatives during the course and with the, within the scope of their assigned duties. Whoa, whoa. Now, do authorized you understand what that is saying? representatives. Authorized representatives during the course and within the scope of their assigned duties. Now, how many times have we heard, not only Garrett Loesch, that he does not represent Watchtower, but we've also heard that elders do not represent Watchtower and they're being thrown under the bus. What is the manual saying? Liability claims against congregations and their authorized representatives. Which would be elders. Who else could it be? And ministerial servants. Exactly. Who else are the representatives of each congregation? It's the elders. Yeah. <laughs> it's the ministerial servants. <laughs> Within the scope of their assigned duties. The KHAA may also help defray expenses incurred by those injured in accidents at Kingdom Halls. Okay? Now, we know they're saying now that you have to do your own maintenance. Okay? The KHAA does not pay for wear and tear, deterioration of property, or other maintenance needs. So, you're on your own for the maintenance. Okay, now this is when it gets interesting. We did not know this, but... Watchtower has their own insurance, like we were talking about. They're self-insured, okay? And, and that's when it gets into 
this in the next paragraph. I'm playing with the cat my feet, so if I do something like this, it's because I'm petting the cat with my feet. The kitty <laughs> likes it. Yeah, I know. Okay, this is not a commercial insurance program. The branch office administers the KHAA fund. Okay, so they decide what gets paid, which is held by the Watch Our Mouth Tract Society of Britain and into which KHAA contributions for congregations are deposited. This fund is used to make virtually all applicable payments. Okay, they decide what gets paid. The fund is also used to purchase commercial excess insurance to protect the branch corporations and the congregations from large claims or catastrophic property losses. We believe this arrangement is in line with Charity Commission guidance in publication CC49, Charities and Insurance. Well, see, we believe this arrangement <laughs> is in line doesn't necessarily say this is a fact. That this is in line with the charity they commission. They think it's in line. They think it's in line. Yeah. My goodness. Now this is when it gets interesting, you know, with the double speak because, yeah, congregations have a legal right and duty as registered charities to decide what insurance is appropriate for their activities, <laughs> and the body of elders, as trustees, bears the responsibility for this. However, the Kingdom Hall Assistance Arrangement has been put in place by the governing body and the branch office to care for all such needs. It would not be prudent for congregations to buy insurance that duplicates the provisions of the Kingdom Hall Assistance Arrangement. Okay, Now this is in bold italics. Thus, the branch does not recommend the purchase of any commercial insurance policy for congregations. You, you, you can do it according to what they're saying, but Watchtower doesn't recommend it. Yeah. Bold italics. But I also... Don't get commercial insurance. But I also caught something here that I didn't catch until just right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just backtrack a little bit, because Watchtower does qualify who their authorized representatives are. Remember paragraph one, yeah. you know, liability claims against congregations and their op authorized representatives. The last paragraph, she said right here that congregations have a legal right and duty as registered charities to decide what insurance is appropriate for their activities and the body of elders as trustees bear this responsibility. So there's so your representatives. There's your representatives right there. I wonder if uh, Zalkin can use this in a court of law. Yeah. See? Watchtower right there just convicted themselves and their elders because in other articles they say, oh, our elders don't represent us. But right here they say they do represent Watchtower. Yeah. And Garrett Loesch in that deposition to the court said he did yeah. not represent Watchtower. But he does. So is he a trustee then? <laughs> Which if he is, he still represents, yeah. doesn't he? So. Yeah, exactly. And if he is on several boards in, within headquarters, uh, committees and boards, then does that make him like a trustee oh, or yeah. representative? Yeah, they, you know, the thing is, Watchtower Liars. can't pull the wool over the eyes of apostates and those that are leaving Watchtower, but they can sure still manage to pull the wool over the eyes of current JWs. Yes. So. And for any of you who want any elders letters, um, the Kingdom Hall manual, anything like that, um, I also have the child safeguarding policy <coughs> from 2011 and 2012 now. So if there's any of that that you want, please contact us either through Facebook or Watchtower.exposed, and I will try to get you this information as soon as possible um, because there's just so much. And to date now, the nine-page confidential elders legal issue letter is still the most requested elders letter ever. I have sent hundreds More secrets being kept. of that confidential elders letter, and uh, that's also the same letter that Trey Bundy he just did his investigation on, and yeah. he has links to that, too. So uh, let's just spread this all over the place, and uh, you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.